Like I was saying earlier, NBA seems to, they're doing something magical this year, and they're just keeping themselves relevant all the way through the year. So I, I love seeing that. Uh, but let's talk about a couple of the bigger stories that have been happening. Uh, number one, my man, Kevin Durant, uh, he's he's close to signing a deal with Under Armour, which, if you don't know, is actually a Maryland base place. The person who started Under Armour, actually, I believe the story is he was taking an economics class and part, part of it was to say, hey, make up a fictitious you know, company, you know, make all the, the mission statement, what would you market, how would you market it, and all this stuff like that and, you know, submit it. And he got an A on the paper, I believe, and then he took it and made it into a real company, which is Under Armour. So it's based in this area. DC, Durant is from this area. So I think a little bit of him kind of shying away from Nike is because he wants to help the area, but he's close to signing between a 265 and $285 million endorsement deal. Yep, that, that could be a big part of it too, right there. Well, uh, which I think he's given that though, big of a deal he too. He make a lot more money off of Nike because Nike would actually would give royalties. So they'd say maybe we'll pay you $10 million a year, but you get 5% of any sales of any shoes that have your name on it. Like Michael Jordan last year made over $100 million from Nike just because he gets a percentage of all the shoes sold that are Air Jordans. Yeah, so Air Jordans are like the biggest. Um, yeah, but Kevin Durant's but, huge, so the possibility for him to make a lot. Is Durant putting his name on any of them, or is he just well, like... it's going to be the Kevin Durant shoe. I mean, just like oh, okay. just like the Jordans, you know, and you have the Mellows, and you, I mean, it's going to be his name. Uh, so... That's pretty cool, but the reason I say he's like the coolest guy ever is because not only is, I think, and now he's not come out and said this, but I think part of the thing is he's trying to help this area, and number two is part of the thing, uh, part of his contract is actually there's some incentives built in there, and one of them is that Under Armour has to build a community center named after his mother, and I'm what? guessing that it's going to be so, I mean, like how cool of a guy is that? He's like, okay, I'll take the money. But also, I want something good to be done for my community. And, I mean, I just love and this guy. He's coming home. not after him. Like yeah, but because he's not arrogant. He doesn't He doesn't want, you know, to say, hey, I'm, I'm big Kevin Durant. I'm so great of a basketball player. Look at me. Look at me. You know, he says, hey, my mom helped make me into who I am today, so all the success yeah. I have is due to her. And, oh, uh, of course, now... Now uh, we have the situation of Kevin Durant has just upped the ante for for Mother's Day gifts for everyone. It's like, oh yeah. look, Kevin Durant's mom. Kevin Durant got his mom a community center named after her. <laughs> What'd you get her? You got her flowers? <laughs> yeah, thanks, KD. But actually, thank you, KD, because <laughs> you know you're just being a nice guy. I love you, buddy. Uh, yeah. So, and then let's talk about some Team USA. Uh, now, they might be cursed, but it seems like they are still going to roll through the FIBA World Cup because they played two exhibition games. I believe they've averaged, like, 20-point victories for both of them. Um, yeah, and they're just going to kill. It's not even going to be close. I, I, that's not really a story. I'm just going to say that because USA is the best in the world in basketball by mm -hmm. far, hands down. Well, Bar it better be. <laughs> if Yeah, if they don't win, I'm going to be upset. We, we've uh, won actually before, won't, haven't so. we? I, and then it was, like, the biggest it. disappointment ever. Well, like, I was looking at something was, like the Olympics. Uh, yeah. I was looking at this the other other years. So basketball has been a sport in the Olympics since 1936. Uh, there's never been a time that the Americans did not medal in the Olympics for basketball if they pl played a team. And I think there's two silvers there and one bronze. The rest are gold. So... <laughs> you know, uh, that's a lot of Olympic victories for us gold medalists. Yeah. Winners. Yeah, that's pretty strong there. We we seem to have basketball uh, down pretty solid, but yep. I, don't know, I guess we we have been criticized before though. Like I guess maybe one of those silver years we got some criticism well, of. Well, uh, the bronze year was back in two thousand four, yeah. and people were yeah. just furious yeah, they, about that. They were like, "We're yeah. bronze. We don't like that. We're gold medalists." Well, but we saw it coming, and we I remember us like the the explanation for it was, um, we didn't give uh, I guess the uh, the the team long enough to play together, and these were guys that were used to playing against each other on all different teams, and they were expected to kind of jump in, whereas a lot of the other uh, countries' teams, they had guys that were used to playing with each other. Uh, well, they, yeah, they and that's when... Brought in. And after that Olympics, they actually brought in Mike Krzyzewski and Jerry Colangelo to kind of run Team USA Basketball, and they started saying, well, hey, we want these Olympic teams to be great, so if you don't want to play with us for the three years 
leading up to the Olympics, you can't be in the Olympic team. So now only players eligible for those are players that have gone through the program, have gotten that, like, been able to gel a little bit more than mm-hmm. other player, other teams. So that they kind of tried to address that issue back then. So, yeah, here's to us another gold medal. Hmm, what can we say? But, yeah, so another NBA note. And I think this is a pretty cool one just because sports, I see sports as a way to bring in diversity to everybody. It breaks down barriers. There's nothing really, and I was trying to think about this the other day. I was trying to think of anything you could be as passionate about as sports, and I can't really think of anything unless you want to say politics, but then you're stupid. Because what, like if you're passionate about a movie or a book series or something, cool, you love that. It really affects you. It has a big inspiration on your life or music or something like that. But there's nothing that kind of goes through the whole year cycle. Like I can love my team all year round in all these sports. There are so, people that love their book series all year round. Yeah, but then you're gonna what? You're just gonna read the same thing well, over and over. Well, I, whatever you go into, they have culture around it or whatever. But yeah, and then you read um, the same thing over and over. I guess maybe you're just passionate about reading. Okay, I don't know, but you can't. It, 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 all right, I guess maybe that was a bad analogy, but whatever. Thanks maybe for ruining my analogy. About, like, games or or what or like competitive games, which is kind of now getting similar to sports if you're talking about competitive level. But yeah, yeah. well, yeah, yeah. So, but um, and like I was saying with the diversity, uh, Sim Bueller becomes the first player of Indian descent uh, to actually play in the NBA. He just signed a contract with the Sacramento Kings. Uh, this guy played at New Mexico State. He's a really big guy, so maybe he's going to be good. I don't know. I don't know. I saw him a little bit in the tournament. He did do pretty well. I uh, probably have to slim down a little bit to really be an effective N- NBA player, but I just think it's cool. You know, break down those barriers, bring more people in. You know, spread that sp- our sports all over the world and show everybody, hey, this is a great way of being ambassadors. The only way North Korea lets Americans in is if we're playing basketball. So hey, what? <laughs> they're crazy. We're sending basketball players over in general with you know Rodman and everything. Yeah. So. And so, I mean, if North Korea can break down some barriers just to have <laughs> basketball players there, that just tells you what sports do for people. So, uh, you know, I just I kind of want to mention that. But uh, the real basketball story of the night is that Dick Bavetta. Now, this is probably one of my favorite referees of all time because you know, if you see him refing your game, he's going to carry call it fair and he's going to call it consistently. Mm. Uh, and he has recently retired. Now, this is a 39-year NBA referee veteran. This guy's been doing it for 39 years. Think about that. That's forever. Most people don't work at a job for 39 years. I I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, most refs don't start until they're fairly... Well, like, they're not usually seeing pretty young refs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's a career change career that you go into. Yeah, yeah. Um, But he has officiated a record... 2,635 consecutive regular season games. Consecutive? Uh, he also, consecutive. Wow. So he never missed a game uh, in his career. That I mean, that's 39 he, years of never missing a game. <laughs> yeah. um, now, he also did 270 playoff games, which I believe is also a record, and in that he did 27 championship games. So this guy has been in the NBA forever. He's actually his own institution, if you ask me. And he's also one of the coolest guys because uh, I think it was about seven years ago uh, Charles Barkley was kind of joking with Dick Pavetta uh, because Charles Barkley does the TNT show, and Dick Pavetta heard it. He, like Charles Barkley was calling him slow or, or was making fun of him, just kind of just poking at him and all in good fun. And Dick Pavetta came out and said, "Okay, Charles, let's see how fast you are. Let's have a race." And so they raced each other at the All Star Game, and I just thought that was awesome. I, I mean, not only to have such a good sense of humor, but you can tell if Charles Barkley played while you were the ref. And if Charles Barkley still thinks you're a really good guy, you must have been fair. I mean, that's just just shows you what type of a person he was. Just a nice guy and a great ref, and we're going to miss him on the court. Yeah. I mean, so. and honestly, too, you don't hear refs get the, this kind of credit, usually, because mm-hmm. we always think about the players. We don't think about the refs, well, but... Usually, if you're talking about refs, you're really talking important. about what they messed up with. It's that's usually true. what they messed up. So, yeah, yeah. That's, they're one of the jobs that if you don't hear about it, that means they're doing a good job. They're like um, offensive linemen in football. You don't uh, want to at the same them. time when things go really bad. Like, uh, what well, was it last year? We had the the bad refs uh, situation in in the NFL uh, where we had the replacements. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was last year or two years ago. It was something. Yeah, in any case, you can tell how it showed us it the value of good refs. 
Mm-hmm. Well, in, so. in basketball, you've had the scandal where some refs were caught intentionally either like shaving points, helping shave points off of the of a score, or add bumping points on just to win point spreads. So you've had mm-hmm. scandals like that in the NBA, and Dick Bavetta has just kind of coasted above it all. So eh, we're gonna we're gonna miss you, Dick. You were a very good ref. But let us know what you think about any of our NBA stories. You know, hit us up, of course, Google+. Plus. Did I, why do I do that sometimes? I sometimes I usually have a flow with it, but every now and then I just throw that out of the whack. But I usually start off with, hit us up in comments down below. Of course, you can hit us up at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com, and, of course, Facebook and Google+. Plus. Let us know what you think. You know, am I wrong? Is Dick Pavetto a horrible ref? I don't know. Do you not want Sim Bueller in the NBA? Actually, a lot of these things I can't imagine why anybody would disagree with me. I can. It's because it's you. Uh, if you just, just don't like my face. If you don't like the words coming out of my face, eh, 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 uh, eh, uh, eh. Uh, Let me see if I get this one. I'm going to get whomped. <laughs>